guys, I thought I would film a quick video here to talk to you a little bit about um, chicken care, um, a little bit of talk about how to protect your flock, and also a little bit of how to prepare for when winter's coming. So I'm going to try to wrap all of these things up in a short time period. It has rained here, and I um, had to wait until all the fog cleared out, and we're still looking like we could get some more potential rain. So we had quite a bit of uh, rain last night and wind, so I've got a lot of stuff blown around out here but um i'm out here at uh, my two what i call my two original coops um and the first thing i want to talk to you about so i've got a small coop that i brought up here originally then i have my larger coop which is right now being used by my four original um my four original red red girls as i call them my rhode island reds and then of course the barn is over 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 yonder so my uh, most of my chickens all of my chickens except for these four at this time currently live in the barn and reside in the pasture, which is um, completely fenced um, with the goats. So um, what I want to talk to you about is um, a lot of people ask about how to protect. How should they, uh, you know, fence their uh, chickens in, their coop, their runs, how do they protect them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, with that, you also go along with the whole idea of, you know, it's fall pretty much. And, um, you know, or it's not technically fall yet. You still have a couple weeks of summer. But once you hit September and there's a, you know, the air changes and different things like that, you know it's coming. You see things starting to migrate. Your chicken's starting to molt, you know, different things like that. So, uh, so a lot of folks have fall and winter on their mind now. And that's good. Um, and there's different ways that uh, people address these issues that I'm about to discuss. So, you know, I, I I know a lot of folks at Homestead, and, you know, they will all probably agree with most of what I'm about to say, but they will probably also have different opinions on certain aspects. So we'll just go with that, okay? Um, the bottom line in protecting your chickens, and I hate to say it like this, but it really, you need to use a lot of common sense. Um, a lot of folks will put up a little chicken coop and, you know, put up a little chicken wire and they think that's going to be the end to their problems. I'm going to tell you right now that's not going to be the case. Now, you, maybe you're thinking, well, I live out in the city or in the suburbs. Well, it's, it's obviously dependent upon exactly where you live as, a, as a, you know, to determine exactly what potential problems you may have. I lived in a neighborhood too, and I can tell you that even though I am, uh, you know, near the mountains in, in, as far as where I was in the suburbs, but even though I was in the city, uh, we had a tremendous run of coyotes. Uh, we had possum. I caught a possum in my backyard. And uh, I had had issues with raccoons. Uh, and not to mention the fact that you have dogs. I love dogs, but let's be honest, dogs are dogs. And let's be double honest, a lot of people do not take their due diligence in keeping their animals up. That becomes a threat to you. So to start out, I'm going to tell you, you need to build the best possible coop you can. Okay, for someone to have a completely wide open coop with a roof and they may have the best nesting boxes, they may keep it clean every day, they may get wonderful eggs, they may have great perches and give you, give you wonderful advice on how to deworm your chickens and do all sorts of cute things. Um, it is not realistic for somebody to have a wide open coop and have a three foot, four foot fence. <laughs> With no, you know, uh, and then, you know, not really steer guide you any further. I am totally against that. I think that your coop should be completely enclosed. I think that when your hens and your, your hens particularly go into their coop, uh, other than that one little trap door, which I think you should have access to locking, um, they're inside. Now, you're also going to have potential issues with digging. That's something you're going to have to, you know, think about. How are you going to fortify, pardon me, to fortify the bottom and around area of your coop? I'm going to tell you right now that um, the number one thing in keeping your chickens or any of your animals safe is going to be, in my personal opinion, how much involvement you have. If you throw your chickens out in a coop, a little fencing, give them some food, change the water every three or four days, and let them be... You know, some people are okay with that. I personally am not okay with that. Okay, I put my chicken coop area, my original chicken coop area, about 50 feet from my chicken, excuse me, kitchen 
uh, kitchen window. Uh, there's some large trees with some beautiful shade. We knew that, so I knew that when it got hot, they'd be very shaded. It also helps to keep from a lot of rainfall. It's very flat, so they don't get flooded. Um, and I have continual watch of them. Even if I'm not out here, I see what's going on, okay? So that's what I have over here in my run. Now, back here in the large coop, I splurged. Now, I know not everybody can go and buy basically a whole shed and convert it to a chicken coop. So I want to encourage you to look for maybe something that's used. Um, some people have doll houses that they, you know, I'm talking almost like a little house structure. Um, I found that when I got my hens, um, when I can get them more out of the elements when they are extreme, uh, especially when it rains, uh, we can get some serious rain. And, you know, they don't like that. And so I really enjoy the idea of, you know, they're up and out of the water. They're not walking in the water. So, you know, I've got this coop back here. It's a shed. It's like a, I don't know if it's a 12 by 20. This was my housewarming gift when we moved up here. Um, we, that was what I wanted. And so we bought it. It was not cheap. Um, but again, look for ways, look on Craigslist. Maybe your neighbor has a little old shed, and it doesn't have to be big depending on how many chickens you have. Um, and the biggest deal is, is when they come in to, to lay an egg or eat or nest or roost or whatever they're doing, they're inside out of the elements. Uh, we have windows. Um, and I just found that this really, really improved uh, their quality of life. Um, that's why I have my chickens in a barn so that I can, they can come in out of the elements. Um, chickens are very smart, but you know, if you are pinning them in an area, they're only going to have so many options of where they can go and what they can do, right? So here is my advice. You have to be willing to take the time daily, in my opinion, to put your girls up, let your girls out the next morning. They put themselves up. Okay, as far as when it gets dark, they'll all just come in like little soldiers. It's so cute to watch them. And they'll go, they'll go and put themselves up. Once that is done, and it's usually right around dark, that's when we do our evening chores. Um, if you can see down here, all we did was cut out a door. I made that. We made that. I made that. It's not rocket science. We cut it out. We put some hinges on it. It's got a lock. So when they come in, and, you know, sometimes you'll have all of them come in, but there's one, you know, it's getting dark and you've got to move on with your business. I have trained my hens um, to being called and with treats. You can do, I would highly suggest you do that because even when they go out to free range, um, they stay very close. They typically do. After a couple of weeks of getting used to their area, they stay close to, uh, they don't go that far. But if there's always that one, that rogue chicken, and so I will shake like mealworms or corn and have a certain call and they come and I will then put them up, you know, and I, we shut that and we lock it. It's completely dry in here. As you can see, we have hay, we have wood sha uh, pine shavings, diatomaceous earth. They have their perch. They have everything they need in there. Um, and it, it's, it's just a nice uh, deal. Now over here, this is my original coop. Okay, and it did the job. I mean, I'm not gonna lie; it's very small. It only houses up to about six hens. Uh, actually, I think it was supposed to do eight. I highly advise that if you buy these smaller coops, whatever they tell you, like, oh, it'll hold eight to ten chickens, take that number down because they're gonna need space. Okay, and it's gonna get dirty really fast on you as well. So if it says eight to ten chickens, consider in your mind four to six. Um, the way that I kept this um, warm is by constant guiding, uh, not guiding, but constant supervision of it and the weather. But also, um, you can see there's remnants uh, remaining of the straw bales that I used. We had this thing completely surrounded with probably 10 bales of straw. Um, and I also was very adamant, or hay, you could do hay. Uh, what I had available at the time was straw. Some people don't advise straw. Um, that's if you put it into the coops. Uh, you know, straw is hollow, so you have an opportunity for more parasites to get in there. So I try to now 
only use hay and pine shavings in my barn and in here. This is, this is what we started with last fall. So what I'm doing is I'm letting that just sit. It's going to be broken down. They're already breaking it down. They'll continue to break it down for me, and I'm going to put it in my compost pile, and that will eventually break down more, and I'll put it in my garden. So that's why it's still sitting there. Just haven't gotten there yet. Um, but I'm telling you, straw or hay can really insulate your, uh, your flock, even your goats. Um, you know, I was very adamant multiple times a day going and checking on my animals. Um, we did provide some heat sources, um, but I'm telling you, make, make those bales your best buddies because they can work for you. I would insulate buckets of water um, down in my lean-to. I have a lean-to down there. This is what we originally built for our goats. They don't, they're not there now. That's where my buck and my weather is going to be. Uh, we're building fencing. Um, but uh, we built that. There's some pictures on my website of us doing that. That was a learning experience. Um, and I was very worried because it got down here. And most of you everywhere else experienced a harsh winter. I mean, when you're talking negative eight here in the south, that's pretty significant. We haven't seen weather like that in probably 30 years. And of course, it would be the winter that I get up here. So um, I was shocked at how well straw and hay, if you can stack it and build it just right, how well it insulates. I would take fresh water down, and of course, I was constantly going, or my son and I were constantly going to the goat shed every hour or two on some of those days because the water would freeze so fast. But there were some times I would go out there, depending on how I stacked it just right, and exactly depending upon the temperature, we would insulate around the buckets with fresh, clean hay and just stack it up and stack it against. There were some times it didn't, it, it didn't freeze at all. So I know that works. So think about that. Um, but really, just to close this out real quick, um, and this goes back to my homesteading video called Homesteading in Reality. The reality of how well your animals of any sort are going to manage health-wise and being protected as far as from predators is dependent upon how much time you're willing to put in. I will tell you that one of the best farmers I know, and he is awesome, he jokes with people because he'll say, he'll say, people come in here and they buy chicken wire. He said, chicken wire only keeps a chicken in. It does not keep predators out. If you want to keep your animals safe, you have to be willing to spend some time and money and effort on some pretty good fencing. But not only that, you need to probably twice a day, morning and night, you've got to make sure. He said, you've got to put your animals up. I got a guy uh, about four miles down the road. He um, is one of the best known uh, goat farmers around. Okay. And I asked him just the other day, uh, I said, do you have any, um, do you have any livestock guardian dogs? And he's like, well, no. He said, I've got one dog and I met it and it's a, it was a mutt and it was sweet. He said, he roams the property and he helps out. He said, but I wouldn't call him an active livestock guardian dog. And I mean, he's out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. And I said, well, how do you manage your goats? How do you keep them safe? He said, you have to put them up. He said, people don't like to hear that. But the fact of the matter is, is I'm home a lot. He's retired now, so that he does have that element. But he said the main thing is, at night, when it starts getting dark, I put my animals up. He said, if you want to keep your animals safe and healthy, you have to be willing to take the time to do the things just like you should or would for your kids to keep them safe. So think about those elements. Um, you know, I really want you to think about protecting your flocks because I'm going to tell you right now, I am very selfish. I am not spending this much time, this much effort, and this much money, in some cases, to feed the local coyotes. And we have them. I have three dens of coyotes on the back edge of my property. Okay, we have quite a bit of property. They are there. We hear them. We know they're there. Lucky for me, I have some neighbors near around that have a lot of hunting dogs, so I think that helps. Um... I have seen fox running down the front of my uh, driveway, and I have seen coyote. Um, to this day, we have not had an issue. I will take care of the issue if I need to. But I think what helps is we are so active. Now, I'm not naive to tell you that I don't believe something could or should happen, but I will tell you that we are taking all measures that we feel we need or can um, 
in order to protect them. So think about those things. Hope you all are having a great day. We have some more videos coming up on my sweet potatoes and some beauty items and um, Amish bread coming up this week. So take care. We'll talk to you soon. And I hope you all are having a great Labor Day weekend.